Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. Um, and today I'd like to show you something. So these are keys, or this is a key, off of a saxophone from 1936, King Zephyr Special. Now I've put a new pad in here. I haven't seated it yet. Um, and I've left the old key cork on because these are the original corks from when it was made in 1936. And um, I'm going to be using that sort of as a starting point for my key heights when I put my adjustment materials on here. Now, cork has sort of a bad reputation as a adjustment material. People say it's spongy or it hardens up over time or it like loses its resiliency. And there's like a lot of modern materials that you can use to replace cork with. But over time, I've come to become a bit more of a believer in cork. I've seen cork hold up on instruments that are very, very old. I've seen it hold up better over time on instruments that I have done. Um, now there's a particular way to cut key corks that can make a really big difference, and I've got a video on that. But I just wanted to give you an example of 84-year-old cork, right? Now also the interesting thing about this is I've washed these keys, right? I took the pads out and I washed them and I left the corks on, and if, you know, if it got knocked off while I was washing it, whatever, no big deal. But if they stayed on, it gave me like a pretty good visual indicator of where these key heights were set originally from the factory, since this came to me with original pads and corks on it. Um, and I want to show you something. So this is 84-year-old key cork, right? And I can take something and compress it so it's still spongy, right? It still, like, absorbs impact. And then, look, springs back into shape after 84 years. Now, you might be saying, well, it's a thick piece of cork. Maybe it wasn't used very much. How about a really thin piece off the palm F? Let's do the same thing. Compress it. Yep. It compresses. It still compresses. Oops. Right? Can you see I'm smashing that down? And then comes right back out. So, and cork is also a renewable resource, right? This is actually from the bark of a cork tree. And if you harvest it responsibly, you can harvest from the same cork tree, um, you know, over a long period of time. Well, there's probably not as much profit in it as like a modern material because, you know, the tree does the manufacturing. So there's not as many people that can get get paid. But I think that Cork's reputation uh, as not being the best adjustment material for saxophones is somewhat undeserved. Over time, I've come to be a big believer. And I've seen my overhauls come back after, you know, 7, 10, 12 years. Um, and how modern materials like uh, synthetic cork and synthetic felt seem to harden over time, and especially after being uh, exposed to moisture. And again, I washed these keys. This was submerged in warm, soapy water for a while and then scrubbed, and you can't tell. So, um, yeah, I guess just a PSA to you know not be sleeping on cork. Obviously, you can do a bad job with good cork, um, but, and there's lots of bad cork out there too, but with good cork used well, it seems to be a really, really good adjustment material that seems to be kind of hard to beat for the properties we want in certain places on the saxophone. So if you've um, thought of cork as an outmoded material, uh, it might be old, but I don't know if it's outmoded. It seems like it does the job really, really well. And let's just do that like one more time to see, to watch. Okay, compress, and then it comes right back. So, my name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. Hopefully you found that um, helpful, useful, informative, maybe thought-provoking. Um, yeah, don't be sleeping on cork.